Welcome back to Cheeky Romans. We've got a live audience here again. So to kick things off, last week we had a look, we had a bit of a look at religious and the irreligious, both being brought into God's core. And this week Paul's been looking at the Jews, so the religious specifically. So Trevor, could you just remind us of the three ways in which these Jews are privileged. Last week, uh, <clears throat> Paul was kind of beginning to look at the religious person, which brought them into the courtroom. And last week, we kind of looked at the personal life of the Jew. And this week, we're kind of looking at the whole history of the Jewish nation. And what you saw is they were privileged in two ways. First of all, they were chosen, they were loved by God. We looked at a verse from Deuteronomy. It's cho they were chosen not because they were greater, more numerous, but because God loved them. So they were, so they were loved. And then secondly, we saw that they were led. So he saved them from Egypt, and then he gave them the law. Not to obey it and then you'll be saved, but you're already saved. And he gave them the law so they would know how to live, and that they would, they would be led. So they were loved by God, they were led by God. And the reason God loved them and led them was so that they would be a, a, a light to the nations. When we saw a verse from, from um, uh, Isaiah, which says Israel were to be a light to the nations. So all the other nations of the world would look at them, and as they saw that they were loved, as they saw them lead, God leading them through obeying the law, they would see God's character reflected in them, and then they'd be drawn to them. That was God's purpose in saving Israel. Mm. So you titled this week Privileged Pride. Can you just explain what that means? What Paul is getting at is the Jew is kind of saying, we're special because we're Jews. And Paul is saying, absolutely, you're loved by God and you're led by God and you're called to be a light to the nations. But let's look at your history. Okay, and what he, if, if you read chapter 2, verses 17 onwards, Paul is kind of to, about to 24. Paul is using s certain words and phrases to show that actually the privilege, instead of leading to humility, has actually led to pride. So they talk about being um, a guide to, the, to, to uh, the blind. They talk about being superior. They talk about having God's law. They talk about all the privileges, but it's as if those things have made them better than anybody else. So they've made them proud instead of making them humble, which is the complete opposite to what God wanted. So what Paul is trying to do is actually say, okay, I'll look at your history. Let's look. And when you look, it's not, it's not a, a, a cupboard with no skeletons. It's a cupboard with plenty of skeletons. So an example of that was Israel preaching against stealing, mm. perhaps, but then stealing things themselves. Mm. I mean, how does that apply to us today now? Yeah, well, what I did was I kind of went to the book of Malachi. So Paul was saying, okay, so you, you, you preach against stealing, but you steal. And if you look at the book of Malachi, which is kind of summing up of the Old Testament, Israel's character, what do they do? They have sacrifices, and they look around at their animals, and they don't give God the best. For the fact that he's given it to them in the first place. They don't give God the best. They, they go to the, the, the animal that's got a broken leg or a scabby on and they give that to God. And God is saying, you are robbing me. You preach against stealing, you stole from me. And that music video you showed us, Sam Smith, uh, I'm not the only one. Can you just explain what that meant? It's yeah. Quite hard well, Paul, first of all, with, with the stealing, Paul, so Paul is basically kind of to apply it to ourselves. Uh, I used the thing, the kind of phrase, we're not, uh, we live in God's world, not as, not as um, tenants, but as landlords. And we act as if we rule God's world. And that is stealing from him. It's taking all the gifts and it's not thanking him. And then just as you mentioned, to the second point I used, the brilliant, brilliant song by Sam Smith, I'm Not The Only One. And then his video, which is basically a video of the pain of adultery. So you have these two, two couples and then they're together in the morning and then he goes off, commits adultery. And it keeps flashing back to the woman. So if the man commit the adultery, you have the pain of the woman. The man commit the adultery, the pain of the woman. Now in the Old Testament, one of the key ways that God shows Israel's sin of idolatry is he links it to adultery. So to love other gods, to, for, for, for your affection to be towards them and not the God as your lover, is to commit spiritual adultery. Now what I really wanted to hammer home to the young people is that God says all of us are spiritual adulterers. So every time we love something else or somebody else more than him, we're being, a, if you like, a spiritual prostitute. So I talked about the book of Hosea, where one whole book is dedicated, where God tells a prophet to go and marry a prostitute, which is a picture of God's relationship to Israel. And I took that picture through the, film, through the video of Sam Smith to try and show 
just how repulsive adultery is, and all of us spiritually know. So in the Old Testament, circumcision was a mark of being part of God's people. So why does Paul mention that here? Brilliant. Well, what Paul has kind of done is he's shown that, okay, you want to talk about history of Israel, you're a Jew, okay, we'll talk about that. And what he shows is that history is littered with unfaithfulness. Okay, so you still, you, 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 you preach against sin, you still, you preach against adultery, but you're spiritual adulterers. So he's shown that the history actually condemns them. Now, what, are, what does the Jew do then? They say, oh, yeah, 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 but we're circumcised. And Paul is saying, yeah, and? You see, circumcision is a physical mark to, to show that you belong to the people of God. But it was a physical mark showing, proving something internal, your, your, your love and devotion to God. And I said it's very much like a wedding ring, okay? Uh, that, 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 thinking of that, that, that video, I'm not the only one with Sam Smith, where the guy goes off to commit adultery, then he comes back. If his wife had said to him, you've been unfaithful, if he then turned back to her and said, oh yeah, yeah, but, but I've got a wedding ring, I haven't forgotten you, you know, I've got a wedding ring. And then she said, yeah, and did you have it on when you were committing adultery? Oh yeah, I did, but I've got a wedding ring. That would be absolutely repulsive to the wife. That's kind of what's happening with, with Israel. They're saying, we're your, we're your people, remember? We, we've, we've got circumcision, we've got the wedding ring on. And God is saying, the wedding ring means nothing if you're being unfaithful. The proof that you're one of my people is that you're saved and you reflect that in obedience to me. Yeah, so finally, um, I was just wondering if, being a youth leader, you're quite a role model for a lot of people. Do you feel under pressure to really try and keep God's law? And I mean, you must feel massive guilt whenever you make a mistake because it might, that might impact other people because they're looking at you as a role model. Mm -hmm. Well, I think, there's, I think there's two or three things. I mean, if you read um, the New Testament, there's a right way to feel if you're a leader, a Christian leader. You know, James talks about, you know, don't take up that um, role without really thinking about it. Mm. Um, so, all of us are role models, we're either good ones or bad ones. Yeah. Okay, so I'm called to be as godly as I possibly can. Paul says, watch your life and doctrine closely. It's interesting, he says, life before doctrine. So watch your life and doctrine closely. So do I feel the weight of that? Absolutely. Should I feel the weight of that? Yes. But it's a weight that you feel, but you don't get crushed by it. If you're crushed by it, then you know you, you won't be a great witness anyway. So I've got a model to young people what it means to follow Christ. But part of that is also failing. Mm -hmm. And then I have to model to people what it means, what it looks like to repent. Okay? So it's the whole picture. I want to be as godly as a leader as I possibly can. So hopefully when you look at me, you think, well, that's what it means to follow Christ. Yeah. But part of that is failure, and part of that is showing people, young people, how to repent properly. So that wraps up the third instalment of Sneaky Little Romans. I hope you come back again to enjoy some more cheeky Romans with us.